Welcome to episode 79 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Immigration. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the dad, uh, taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty, and that is to prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view immigration and we'll discuss Australia's recent pandemic management bill. With that, let's dive right in. Tub, how are you today? I'm stellar. I'm stellar. All this right. all a great place to be. All right. It is. It is a great place to be here in studio where we're discussing liberty and dad stuff. So today we want to dad talk about stuff. right dad stuff. Dad how, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or, about choking out our kids and stuff like that. Right. You mean Whoa, well, and other dad topics? Okay, so now all the peaceful parents that just tuned out, <laughs> they're like, we're done with this. All right, that was quick. All right, so I just lost half the audience. I don't know how how many actually are you, peaceful parents. Half of them are peaceful parents. I don't know. I don't know. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I've had a few run-ins with peaceful parents. So. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that's not the, the that's topic not the point today. today. No nope. topic today is immigration. And, uh, you know, I want to lead in with this. I want to say, look, when you own yourself, that means you can decide where you go and who you see. And when others do the same, say, choose to have you over to their property, their house, then the mutual nature of that creates a meaningful relationship that can possibly impact the world around you. For instance, others may benefit if uh, the nature of you and this other person produce something that others can use. Maybe not, or, not necessarily this, right? But, right. Uh, you know, other things, right? You know, maybe I invite somebody over and uh, they buy something from my garden, right? I like to use the garden okay. analogy, right. even though I cannot manage a garden for the life of me. Um, and sometimes the world is just improved simply by one person telling others about the positive experience that they had. So let's talk about immigration. Where are you? And you know what? <clears throat> I, I got a good place to start with that. Okay, but hold on. Now yes. I'm going to tell you how to do your podcast. All you right. didn't give us the text from the book yet. Oh, goodness. I did not. So we're going to need to do that. And uh, let's go ahead and see what the book says about and, this. And the reason why is because I said, I remember this because in my notes, I re actually referenced back specifically to gotcha. what he says there. So, I got gotcha. well, right. I think one of the episodes in the past, I actually forgot to put it up on did screen. Did you really? I think so. I made a mistake. Failing miserably So let's at this. put that up on screen here. Um, clickety click, click, click. And there it is. And it says it's one it's one line, one simple sentence. It should be easy for foreigners to come work uh, legally in the U.S. Right now, our laws make it almost impossible. So that is the text. And let's see where Tub wants to go with that. I, I thought you had a good starting point. You said I you do. had to start, go with I it. I do, but I want to make sure I, you know, keep up with the co-host. No. Sometimes you come more prepared than I do. Uh, if that's the case, we are in trouble. <laughs> no wonder why we got six people watching. Right, and... right. No, no, guys, do what you got because we'll see. That's not an insult to those six people who no, love you. No, those are the smart ones. Right, those are right, the ones right. who actually understand and get right. what's going on here. And when others hear this one, they're not going to they're going to be insulted for not having watched it. So now they won't watch it in the future. But anyway, uh, mistakes were made, but we're moving on. <laughs> it started with, I offended the group right from the start. So. Right. We're just All right, we're settling. All right, 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 so are you going first in right, this? Or this you... might be the cancel episode. This is the, this is the last one. Canceled. This was there. This is right. where their run ended. We haven't even talked about immigration yet. We're yes. still going to get canceled, right? Okay. Okay. So, you know, in the libertarian community, there are primarily two major uh, positions that people stake out. These are the two biggest ones that people stake out. And that's open borders and closed borders. Mm -hmm. I think we've mentioned it in a past episode. But for anybody that didn't see one of those episodes, open borders uh, effectively means exactly what it says. You open the borders and you let anybody come in. Closed borders means that you close the borders and you don't let people come in. Now, the reason that there are two big uh, groups that kind of argue back and forth on that matter 
It's simple. The open borders folk, they say, hey, as an individual, kind of like I described, you own yourself and you have the freedom of travel. Right. Anybody that restricts it is is taking away your freedom. And so there's this issue with government decided lines, right? Like the borders and whatnot. And so they say like, hey, you know what? All property should be private anyway. So therefore, when the government impedes you, that's a problem. And then you have the other side, the mm -hmm. closed borders. They actually don't disagree with that necessarily. Right. But what, where their problem is, they say we have way too much going on in terms of like social safety net, social welfare. And until we resolve that, mm -hmm. We um, we need to have our borders closed. And so this dispute comes between these two groups. And then the open borders folk, they like to say, hey, you know what? If we open the borders, that kind of creates more incentive to fix that problem. Uh, so so you might look at it as a bit of a gamble. So where do you stand on okay. the open, closed border? So, all right, let, let me let me start with this. It's, it's funny that even as libertarians, because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm more of a closed border okay. guy, okay? Um, I'll kind of explain that out in a second. But it's funny that we as libertarians, we, we believe in my property. Right. I have the right to go, this is my property. Why would we not think the country has that same right. premise to go, this is our country, this is ours, what we do. Here's what's funny. Well, there's no our, right? There's only individuals. For what? When in in the libertarian community, we tend to think of it as individual. Yeah, but, There's but no our. I always say we I, don't have property. I have property. I have pro have property. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying is that we like I have this. You have this. We have property. Right. Why can't gotcha. we not say okay. that? Okay. So here's what we have to understand. Like it or not, we can. And I don't think you can really even argue it. Nations have borders. That that's right. natural. And here's what's funny. Um, it's been. It's probably been three, four years now. I remember the Pope chimed in when Trump was about building the wall. Right. And the Pope chimed in is like, hey, you really shouldn't have walls. You know, what, what do you think? Kind of really dogging out. Here's what's funny. So a few years back, uh, we were in Italy. We were in Rome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this was our second time going to Rome. Right. And so we come up and there's this entrance, main entrance way up into Vatican City where the Pope is. And so I wasn't thinking, I got turned around a little bit. I'm like, well, okay, this isn't the area. So we walked around. Well, here's what happened. What I found out, fully around the Vatican, you know what they have? Walls. Right. Walls. Right. So, and, and, and there was no other way to get in right. except for what we ended up doing because I messed it all up. So at nighttime, we're, we walked all the way around Vatican City right. to come back into the way that they want you to come in. And I think it's absurd that a guy who is a nation inside of a nation right, right. is saying, telling somebody, you ought not to have borders, you ought not to have walls. And we're like, dude, you're living inside of them yourself. And it's right. not even your land. You basically borrowed this land from Italy and now you're saying this is who we are. So I, I, I look at this and I go, I, I, I like the idea of borders. I, I, I'm... Well, I know we're going to get to this further. Like, mm -hmm. but so for, for my thinking is this because the book specifically mentions work. Right. It says right in there that, right. you know, people come into work. So I started, that's the avenue I started with. That's the okay. avenue I kind of traveled down a little bit. Let, let's, let's focus on work. Um, so through reading, like I did, I actually did some research for oh, this. Snap. Okay. See, and, I told you and, he came more prepared than me. We'll see how this plays out. So th there were actually 10 different types of work visas. I hear about them a lot from my wife, but I didn't know there was 10 of them. Right. Um, so here's what I found over the past 10 years, mm -hmm. visa overstays outnumber border crossings two to one. Oh, wow. So I'm like, Wait a minute. So we're doing all these things. Now, I want to tell you, you can go to the American Immigrant Immigration Council. They have a great website with just a ton of information on it. You can do whatever right. you do if you want to or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that, that's where I started kind of getting a bunch of information. So here's what happens. We have people coming in and, and they're doing it the legal way. But then who's following up? Right. Because now that supposedly we have this immigration for work. They're coming in and nobody's keeping up with, okay, this is what they're doing. Right. So it comes down to what happens when... Because I know sometimes you get sponsored by a company or whatever. Right. And, and so what happens when you leave that company? Uh, is the company just kind of going, oh, it's not our responsibility right. anymore. You know, kind of best of luck to you. And then there's a number of these also where you can bring in your family members mm -hmm. on one of these visas. And when you right. bring these, when you bring them in, some of them depend on the one that you have. They have different guidelines. Some of them, some of them can, as soon as they come in, your family members can work also. Right. Other ones, you got to wait time and they wait ages. I mean, they got all different kind of things that go along with it, requirements and guidelines. But I, I started looking at it. I go, okay, well, wait a minute. If we're going to focus just on the work part of it. Right. Okay. But can we just open it up? Do right. we just open it up and let anybody come in because we're realizing that, you know what, that's not fixing the problem either. Now, I might be jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but kind of what you said, 
we can't just open up the border with the way that we're running the country right now. With okay. this huge welfare state that we have right. going on, right. we, we can't just And keep, that's what I meant earlier. Yeah, yeah, state. exactly. Yeah. We I can't just keep bringing people in right. and paying for everything that they're doing. So I, to me, that's another argument of, you know, we have to have this closed border. Now, chime in whenever you need to, because I got I actually have like legit notes I mean, here. He's got, I can like see I got right stuff. Like goodness, look at this. Goodness, it's, like, so, it's in tiny print too. It's like so font like six. That, well, if it's six, I what? <laughs> what? 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 Um, but but so here's what happens. So I think naturally when we speak of immigration, we tend to focus on the southern border with Mexico. I think right. I think that's that's always what's in the news. That's always what we hear about. Now I don't know if you've ever looked up, and I I've had on my phone for years screenshots of what it is if you want to go into Mexico to live. Right. They have very strict guidelines about what you have to do. You have to be able to um, sustain yourself financially. Mm -hmm. um, you can't own waterfront property. Like you, they have all of these wow. things. Yeah, they're very strict. And I'm kind of like, hmm, well, why is it they feel like they could just bust into ours, but we right. have to have these special guidelines for them. Right. And, and so here's what we run into because, and there's a legit argument with, yeah, but people are trying to come in legally and the process just takes so long. And that's usually the biggest complaint you hear right. is right. about the length of the process. So my thinking is then, okay, why don't we address the problem of the process? I don't think we just say, well, forget it then and we'll just let everybody come in. Right. Here's an idea. Why don't we take those 87,000 people they want to employ at the IRS and put them over to immigrations instead right. and let them start working people through the process so now people right. can come in legally without all of that work. Right. Yeah, I'm, I've am i always been a fan of reducing how um, how difficult it is to get here. Now, here's the funny thing. My wife is an immigrant. Mm -hmm. She came here for college and then she decided that America was super duper awesome. Yep. And Or maybe she decided that beforehand. I don't know. But once she got here, she decided... They confirmed it. One way or the yeah, other, yeah, she was in. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was like, I'm in it to win it. And so she's here, and she was a green card holder for the longest time. Okay. And then she finally did get her citizenship. She got her citizenship in order to bring her mother over when her uh, when, when her mother needed to... Uh, when it was time for her mom to come and live with us. Okay. And, um, y you know, and, and because the process is just so complex and convoluted. Now, here's the interesting part. Once we decided that we wanted her mom to stay here permanently, we mm -hmm. went through that process. We filled out the paperwork, and it seemed simple enough. Okay. But then it got rejected. Okay. And we went and spoke with an immigration lawyer, and they were like, oh, yeah, it's probably because of this and this and this. And they're like, I can do that. And so we ended up paying an immigration lawyer. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, her mom is in her 70s. Okay. We ended up having to pay a lot of money to an immigration lawyer to basically do paperwork. Yep. That was what we had to do. And it was so infuriating, right? And, and it wasn't a simple process like, oh, you're from a foreign country where family ties are, you know, um, are, are such that they're, that, that, that they live with each it's, other. It's culture, right? yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. part of the culture that, like her brother, before he passed, and I don't want to give out too much family information, right. he was living with her, the, the, with her, uh, with her mom. Mm -hmm. And like, that is normal. Right. This is not like abnormal at all. And uh, it's not like over here, it's like, oh, you literally- Get him out. Like, basement. yeah, my whole thing's get the uh, boys out of my house. He's on Reddit <laughs> living in his mom's basement, right? <laughs> like, no, it's not that at all. It's entirely different. And so- and, and and so she so we went to bring her mom over and we ended up having to pay somebody to basically do its administrative paperwork because there were so many things that had to be double checked and 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 we had to go and get like her birth certificate and we had to have that translated into English and you know like all this and it's like look it's a seventy seven year old woman that wants to come and live with her daughter with, yeah not just randomly hoping like, something works out you know like I have a plan and and it's like and 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 they made it like the process feels like you know i haven't been through the process but it feels very much similar to if somebody who is 25 wants to come over here and okay. work and it's like okay what are your plans who are you doing have you, and they ask her all these you think there should be different you, questions you think right? there should be a different standard based on plans um, and age and stuff I, along those lines i mean i think we could simplify it okay a lot and we could say like if you're 77 whether you've been a prostitute probably doesn't matter anymore. Right. It you know, probably especially, doesn't. <laughs> especially if we've because that's one of the questions I ask, right? Really? Yeah. 
And oh, so uh, they thought they were going to come over here for that purpose. I'm guessing. No, no, they not, were just not, this, not 77. It's just but a long just, list of questions. Okay. You know, have right. you ever been part of a terrorist group? Have you ever been this? Have Does you ever you done think this? everybody ever goes all this? Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, part I, of terrorist group. And, yes. Yeah, and, and the first thing I'm yeah, that was I was like. Who yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> actually, it turns out I am the leader. You know, like I if you do, if you research, you know, mm -hmm. so it seems absurd anyway on its face. But then it seems to be even more absurd for some people. It's like, hey, validate and say, oh yeah, turns out this really is your mom. She's seventy-seven. Chances are she's gonna do what many seventy-seven-year-old people do: go live with their family. Mm, or like, somebody yeah, right. right like this is not she's probably not coming over here he'll look for a job and roam in the streets until she right, finds something you know mm -hmm. and so i feel like like a lot of that could have been cut out like you've already validated that my wife christy is a citizen like right. she now is a citizen mm -hmm. so i uh, to me i felt like hey you know what you should make the process easy for parents you know and and, and it's just it wasn't easy whatsoever and, and, and we spent a lot of money just to, just to, and her mom's not even a, a citizen. She is simply a, a legal resident. Oh, okay, all right. Like that's it. That's all we wanted. We wanted because if she comes over just normal, she has mm -hmm. like she, she she can legally be here for like six months. Okay, and then she technically has to go back because now her visa or not a visa, but her um, her, uh, she's overstayed. Okay, you know, she's right. overstayed her welcome. Mm -hmm. Um, right. <laughs> I'm and, not, I'm gonna make it very clear. You said that. You phrased it that way. And then she has to go back, and then we can bring her back. Well, of course, you know all that travel is difficult for a 70 year old person. You know, or at least for some of them, right? And so, like to me, that process was difficult. But here's another interesting story. Okay. I, I was a web developer in a in a previous company. I was a back end web developer, and I I um, well back end front end. You won't know what that means, but that basically means what you see and what you don't see. So stuff that goes on the background. I, I appreciate so I was, the fact that in that little statement you said, "Well, tell me you're an idiot and you're a little mind, so you well, would not, you would not understand the complexities of you, the things that I've done in life." So I continue. Mean, Okay. Continue on. Tub, you're an so, idiot. So. so you are a front end developer. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. I bet you there's a front end developer going, <laughs> jerk. So, um, no, I'm just not used to meeting people and they're like, what's that mean? Front end, back end? So I just kind of jumped the gun. Anyway, uh, so I had a lot of peers that were from India, right? Mm -hmm. And I asked them one time, I said, hey, you know, I said, how come it seems like I only see doctors or um, engineers, uh, whether they're like mechanical engineers mm -hmm. or software engineers, engineers of you know various brands, skilled, um, or restaurateurs. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, right? you, you know people that run the Indian restaurants. Yeah, like those three occupations are like the only time that I see an Indian person, particularly from India. Right, but virtually at all. And I said, how come I don't see any like plumbers or mechanics or construction workers you know like i mean i'm right. sure there's probably some out there but i just you know there's so few that i don't see them but i see I, i've met plenty of indian uh people who are doctors and engineers very much so you know uh -huh. and they said that's because that's what your country allows to come over and i was like really like i had no idea okay that apparently if you and this is according this, i haven't researched this so this is according to some people that i talked to who have mm -hmm. immigrated i said they said if we wanted to be a plumber you know, we were good at plumbing. We're we're gonna have a tough time getting um, a visa to come over. Like we we can't. You know, um, it's probably not impossible, but it's much easier if you want to come over here to be a doctor. If you want to come over here. So to be basically, a at that point right there, if they want to come to America with a lesser skilled position, we'll say they they have to come in as a just an immigrant, not for a work visa or that type of thing. Right. That's what we're saying. Okay, so right. you have to just come in right. through the process. So there's different. Okay, and yep. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but. I've seen it years ago where somebody drew out this like huge map and it's like, here's what happens. Here's the process. And it's like, it looks like candy land, you know, it's just like it's winding. That's the process for what? To, to immigrate, to, okay. to come over to the U.S. And there's like all these little stops along the way, right? And it, it literally looks like a little child's game board, you know, somebody just navigating this. Okay, so. Thing. So I think it's way complicated. Okay. But here's the really funny part. You ask my wife, you ask many of the other people who have immigrated here. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, the uh, the illegal Im immigrants should come here the right way. Yep. They, uh, I mean, I've, I've never, I, I, and I even have one guy, he told me, he said, America should protect its own people. And if that means I don't get to come over, then that's that's too bad. But you need to protect your people and you need to make your immigration tougher and, 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 and or not tougher, but, you know, like on illegal immigrants. You're it's right. Usually, it's usually the ones that have come over here legally. Um, tend, at least as far as my experience, tend not to appreciate the ones that have come here illegally. Mm -hmm. You know, and I look at it and I say, I want to make it so easy 
that if a guy from India or Mexico or Spain, I don't really care where you come, if he's a plumber and he wants to come over here and be like, look, I think there's better plumbing opportunities in America. I could have my own business and I, maybe I can't do that here for whatever reason. I want him to be able to come over. Okay. So I'm more of a, uh, what they call Ellis Island style. Right. Okay. So let me ask you then, that. because in that, like I even have this, I'm like, cause the book mentions, you're mentioning it there. You, the word that gets used a lot is easy or easier. Right. right. Okay. So easy and what do you want? Does the paperwork need to be easier? Is it easier and proof of who you are? Is the process should, like, what do we, we always throw around that word easier. It should be easier. It should be easier. Okay. What, what part of it should be easier? Is um, it, oh, uh, cause I'm looking at it to me and what it sounds like, and maybe I'm wrong. It seems like the, the complaint is the length of time. Right. So it's not so much the process. Right. So folks, we're going to have to take a pause. I'm on baby duty today. And my son is. Um, we are back and we were talking about making it easier. easier. And mm -hmm. just so you know, being Liberty Dad is never easy because there's always liberty to fight for and there's always something that my son needs. So we've got that taken care of. We'll see if we get through the rest of the show without any more needs. But we were talking and, about easy. And you do know that in reality, you could just edit that out and nobody would ever know. But then I that could, defeats but, them. But, that, but why? That makes it a little bit less genuine. Yeah, right? then it's just liberty. It's not liberty dad. Yeah. It's I just mean, liberty guy. Like, just yeah, liberty, I mean, like liberty, liberty guy, dude sitting in his room. Never, ever, you right. Know, like, no, I got to have him in here every now and then. All right, so, I'd have him in here talking, but he would I, just talk about what? milk. I should have just let you go. And I should have just kept going down my stuff. Be like, listen, I don't know what's wrong with DL. He's got this all wrong, but maybe we can work on this. That's what I should have done. All right. So, yeah, we're, remember I asked, I said, because we talk about easy, what, what do we want to make easier? Is it the paperwork? Is it the proof? Or is it the process? Because right. as I was saying was that um, a lot of people complain about the length of it's right. this time. So truly, 87,000 instead of IRS, send them down there, let them start working right. on these type of things. So what do we want to make easier? What I want to make easier is I say, when I say Ellis Island style, um, it's kind of close to open borders, but it's kind of like open border, but with a touch of closed. And so I say... Anybody can come over here, and the only thing that, that needs to happen is um, we we just in some way ve verify that you're not a, a violent criminal to the best of our ability, and, and that's difficult. How's that different than closed border? And, and um, well, if we have no knowledge of you being a violent criminal, then you aren't a violent criminal. Okay. Right? Start with that. And then um, if you don't have any communicable diseases that are of, of any serious okay. nature. With, and, I, and I do have a caveat or an exception with that in that I say... If like, let's say somebody was over in another country and they contacted Mayo Clinic and then they said, hey, right. we're going to, you know, Mayo Clinic says, you know what? You we can treat that no case. problem. We're going to work with you, uh -huh. whatever, how, whatever. And then they come in. Well, I want them to be able to come in and, and, you know, and then they simply just let the government know, hey, Mayo Clinic in, is going to be working with me. And then so then they basically go straight to Mayo Clinic and, and, and they get the medical treatment that they need. Right. So in that case, it would override the communicable disease. But if you just have a general communicable, and I mean a serious one, I don't mean like, you know, the flu. Okay. Right. Um, probably not even COVID. Right. I know that will probably upset a lot of people, but, you know, um, so to me, basically let you come in. Now, I do understand because part of my view of that is, once you get here, very much like Ellis Island was once before, you are on your own. And this is where we heard the stories of like, you know, my great grandpa, I, he came over here with $20 in his pocket and now he owns a bakery. Uh -huh. Now he owns a bakery, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, but he had to really work hard. He had to, you know, he worked at somebody's bakery, yes. slept on the floor in the back yep. and then finally saved up enough money to buy his own bakery. And I've heard stories like that, right? Mm -hmm. And And I'm okay with that. Yep. And I think that that's those, as it should be. Like, right. I'm, I believe no matter which way you come in or however it is, I right. think that should be the plan right. that you come in knowing right. I'm going to come in. I'm going to bust my hump. It right. will not be given to me. Yep. And I think that that's a difference between old school immigrants that we saw, you know, 100 yep. years ago versus the ones that we're seeing today. Right. There is not this, man, I can't wait to get in there and just hump it and get at it. Now right. it's more of a, this place is great. It's going to take care of me. Right. And, and that I think that's part of our problem. Because let me be honest with you. It, well, I, I think that what we run into many times, and I and I'm not traveling down the road of well, gang members are coming in. I like forget all that mess. Right. The gang members, yeah, they come across. But let's be honest, with you, the the news, the media covers that because right. it sells a point, scares you a little right. bit, and makes you want to do all these type of things. So I, well, some I, of those hombres are good. Some of the hombres are good. Yeah. Some of the gang hombres. You don't. Just... You don't know referencing. No. That's when Donald Trump was like, some of them are good people. Oh, some of the, oh, you're going to travel down that road with it? Some, they're not all bad. Some on the other side, on both sides, there's good people. 
not going down there either. So he, he, here's what I'm getting at. So I, I, I don't want to walk into that area of, it's just all these other things are going on. We, we can't be ready to take them in and support them. Right. Um, here's what happens. There's the other argument that I'm sick of. Well, you know, when we came here, we took the country over. We kicked. Up. Shut up! Like I, right. I, yeah, I get so tired of him talk about when, when, the, when, when the Europeans first came here. Shut! Up. I don't care about that. Right. Here's what we have now. We are not at that time. We now have laws, and we have a nation, and and we have borders. It's, it's so don't give me this junk about how when we first come here. So, you start throwing that one at me, I'm done. Like I this mean, conversation's okay. over. I got you because I'm 20 percent Native American, and we had a lot of that when. You people came over. When you ex exactly, but you see what I'm saying is that things have changed through time. Right. No, I, and because I do things agree. have changed through time, this is where we are. Well, we are. Um, yeah, we're here now, and way too many events have transpired to really undo anything. Yeah, you can, right? like, you're not like, going to go back. You're going to send all. You know, like you're going to send everybody I mean, back to you. Like right. So he, here's my thing: it is that so they come into this idea. Well, we're not going to stop all of them anyway. Right. Okay. You're right. You're not going to. That's that's probably true. But more importantly, okay, guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to stop every drunk driver. Right. So does that mean we just step away and let all the drunk drivers just go? And we like, right. no, no, no. You go and you get the ones that you can. And you don't throw your hands up and say, forget all of it, which is right. kind of an open border type thing. Well, just forget right. about it. We're not going to catch them all. No, but what about the ones that you can? Right. So I, I don't think that we can just kind of throw it open. It's just, and this is what we're facing right now in this country is there's almost this overwhelming desire to just let's just right. open it up and whoever comes in just comes in and once again i am not referring to the gang members the terrorists that are sneaking in right but i also know better than to think that these aren't all just good people who are trying to come here and bust their hump they're right. trying to come in here and get what they can and live off of what has become right. the american thing right. so i look at it, i go okay so what's happened is our current situation is is it's getting exploited by both extreme sides, right? You, you know, and, and I think that inside of that, um, as we go to extremes, we got to kind of get rid of the extremes and look at what's really going on. Because here's what I say: I am an advocate of a wall, okay? Like a physical wall, a physical wall. Oh, I am wow. an advocate of a maybe the first libertarian ever. That, yeah, ah, there's got to be more of us. I am. I am an advocate. They're probably of, quiet about it. Uh, uh, okay, reason. well, guess what? But here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm saying. You know what a wall has? Doors. A okay. wall has gates. I'm not saying like, here's what I want. We have this. Why do you right. put a fence in your yard? So that you have control of who comes in and out of it. That's the purpose of it. Okay. So as a border, mm -hmm. give us a wall. Now, I'm not saying that that wall is now it's a wall and you're all out and we're all in. That's not what I'm talking about. Give us doors. Give us gates. Give it, The idea behind that is we walk the wall until we get to the gate where we can be come in. Wow, that's interesting. And, <laughs> and so I want, I want people to come right. in. I do. I, I'm not sure that a wall is... We don't have to have the argument now. I just, I'm not sure I'm on, on board with that. I'm not, I don't, what, I don't. What, what, hold on. What? So tell me the better way then. If you're saying we want to control who comes so, in and out, how so, do you do that so without I look at it, some structure? So I look at it and say, again, I'm I'm being pretty open about how people come in. I'm like, like for starters, when I say we don't want people that are convicted violent criminals. How do you find them? Right. Well, how largely, do you find them? largely we're not going to have access to that information. Right. I mean, we might. In today's age, it's a little bit different. Like we might be able to do a Google search, might be able to find out like, oh, it looks like this person's a- So you know, are wonder. we trying to find them or no? But I'm, t I'm telling you what I would want, right? Uh -huh. Not what we are doing, but okay. what I want. Yep. And what I would want is to say, look, we're going to try to identify whether or not you're a violent criminal. Now, we may not actually have all the information necessary to be able right. to really confirm that. Yep. But if we don't find anything but, off, uh, off the cuff, fine, we're good. you passed. Yep. Okay. We'll test you for some communicable diseases that yep. we think are serious. You pass that test, bam, you get to come in. Now, here's why. Uh, here's where some of the libertarians may ups get, get upset with me. Okay, and that's me. I would say we're not going to have a lot of tolerance for people, and we will kick you out just as quickly as we let you in. Okay, and what I mean by that is not if you overstayed your visa. That's trivial to me. Not if you. Um, you know, I, I want violent. Cr you created rape. You armed. Uh, committed armed robbery. You you assault somebody like in in a violent way. I don't mean like you got in a simple. Now that's before fight. they got citizenship. Is what you're saying? If these things happen right. before citizenship, right. Right. Okay. you're here. We've let you come in. We've been pretty open about you coming in. You come in, and so now the ma the matter is, we need you to assimilate, assimilate right. in different ways. One of those being, we need you not to cr not not to commit any violent acts. Right now, there are some things that I would object to. 
um, that, that I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I wouldn't want to kick them out. So if you come over here and then you happen to become a prostitute, right? I'm not going to seek to have you removed for that because I don't think that should be illegal in the first place. Um, even though I'm not particularly a big fan of it. Right. Right. But that's, that's not, a. I mean, we it, can okay something and not be part of it. As long as it's consenting, I don't have an issue. All right. Armed robbery, not consenting. Rape, yeah. not consenting. But so I'm going to say, kick you out. You don't, you, we no longer, we gave you an opportunity. We opened the doors. We were pretty open. We didn't make it too difficult. And the reason that I think that it should be allowed, that, that this, um, this allows people that are, um, that are not, already, you know, engineers mm -hmm. who in many cases have come from families that had a little bit more means to them. So this allows the plumbers, and, and this is not downgrading plumbers, just in other yep. societies, mm -hmm. a lot of times if you're a plumber, that may mean that you didn't have the money to go and get higher education. So you may be you may be working on limited means to begin with, okay. at least in poor countries. So, so let me ask you the question, then, because the, the latter part of that, you come in, we have laws, so you can, okay, I'm, I think we would all be in agreement with. Right. Here's your problem, though. You're saying we don't want a wall. We don't. We don't. We don't want right. that. Okay, but we want to check everybody anyway. Okay, how? Well, as how, you come, how, how, where? When, where? When, when, when you come from where? When you come through Ellis Island. Okay, but hold on. That's we, great, Ellis Island. How many? Is everybody coming to Ellis Island? We deb. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but I mean, it could be multiple. Like so. Here's, so, here's so I have one location. Here's another location, and instead, uh -huh. instead of having all these IRS agents, like you were saying, I think it's a great idea to be honest we with can, you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we can dedicate some of them to say, hey, "Look, you're going to be checking people, and you're just going to do the best search that you can in the, in in whatever given time frame that we've determined." But where and you're going to validate that this person can come through? But, but where? Here's what, what I'm where? getting at. Because you're talking about, look, we don't need a wall. We don't need. We'll just let them stroll. Okay, so who's going to be out in the field as they're coming? across the border who's going to be the one out there stopping oh, each one of you don't where, need, where are they you, you won't need that what, what do you There's mean the, because all right we are back and turns out my son was not a big fan of waiting for the next episode on netflix i am trying to cheat right now since i am on daddy time i've got him in this bedroom here watching television uh, you know report. what? He might really be worked up about your horrible thinking about him. He might be. That he might, might be, be what he like, really Dad. Dad, stop talking. Dad, stop talking. It's getting right. worse. It's getting worse. Dad, how would I make it here? <laughs> right. So, okay. So, what my point is, is that you're saying you want to check people. You want to do Bring, a background check. A simple check. Okay. Okay. A simple check. I, I'm, fi I'm fine with that. Good. But then, where? once again, where do you do that at? If they're okay. just coming across. So, so, this is what I, I think this is what I'm getting at. One, right now, it's difficult. Right to get over here, you have to you have this huge process. If you make a mistake, then you have to go back to the the, the end of the line, and so it's very very complicated. It costs money, so on and so forth. And so the easier path for many people is just to cross illegally. And so there therefore they find whatever poor in the border, right? Uh -huh. Right, they find wherever it is. And I say you can eliminate that simply by making the process easier so that the, the same people that are coming over here would be like, hey, you know what? It's just as easy to go through there. I got to go through and give them my name and they're just going to do a double well, check, make do, sure do, I'm not a criminal. Hold on. Do you, but suddenly, they, do you suddenly think then that the guy who is coming from an environment of rape and murder or whatever like that is, do you really think he's going to go, oh... I still got to go over there. The no, the, he's not going to do it. If he still has the opening, he's still going to take that opening to get to where he wants. I mean, to be. if he's if he's a if, if he's a violent, that's criminal, what you're trying yeah. to find, right? Right. So if so, again, if this is the per, if this person that comes over, so I, I I think the difference between what I'm saying and what we have now is if you come over here illegally, you have to stay doing all your business illegal, right? And so you have to hide. Like I when I was in Indiana when I lived up there. It was, uh, you would have like these raids on companies, like these manufacturing yeah. companies every now and then. Happens down here still. And okay. So, uh -huh. so, um, uh, and, and I remember you would hear about it in the news every so often. You'd be like, oh, you know, they got raided and uh, a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of uh, illegal immigrants were removed from the facility who were working there, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to stay illegal. And so the path that I'm offering, what, what I'm suggesting is that we make it super simple. But once you're in, you're in legally, you're, you're good to go. You can, you don't have to worry about I'm here illegally so I can only get a job working with somebody who wants to hire. You can go anywhere and you can be like, hey, I'm allowed to be here. I want to get a job with you. Okay. Bam. That's but it. That, so, that, that, so I think still there's an incentive in, That still there. holds into my right? area. But here's the problem. I'm a huge advocate of you, you had to solve the problem. Okay, right. if my roof is leaking, 
Right. Okay. It does me no good to start buying new things. Well, it leaked on my TV, so I got to go buy a new TV. And now my rug's all messed up or whatever. I have, my hardwood flooring is all messed right. up. So let me fix all these things while it's still flooding in. That's absurd. And right. that's what we're doing right now. We're allowed, let them all come in. Let them all come in. Now let's see how we can fix it. That's absurd. You have to right. shut so it you're off. You're a closed border guy. I really am. You have to shut it off and say, okay, I'm an advocate of wait over that you wait there right until we let you come in it's the same way you don't let somebody break into your house and go what are you here for right no you stop them out there I, and go okay I, I think i'm gonna check this I, I think that we're undervaluing the power of incentive and i think that a lot of people that want to come over here actually want to come over here and do something productive whatever whether that's productive they I, learn to be a lawyer or they see, see or, or they open their own is, grass cutting this business. is the guy who does not agree with you on that okay, i, I well, agree with you but well, what I'm wrong, saying, but, but but what I'm saying though is that we're we're suggesting in some crazy way that we'll find the bad ones. Where if you're going to allow them to just flow wherever they because, want to, so all I'm saying is we're give employing us a we're employing people to manage paperwork in in this process. They're, we're employing people to manage this process, and it's not really doing all that great anyway. because no, we're still getting illegal people to come over. So what I'm okay. saying is you reduce that process, so we no longer have the resources that we would be dedicating to this crappy process mm -hmm. could be dedicated to, hey, we heard reports that there's a guy over here. He's, you know, breaking into homes. He's whatever, whatever that he's doing, whatever that, you know, we, we've got some, let's go and investigate that. Let's go deal with that. So now we dedicate them instead of this crappy process that isn't really stopping people from coming over anyway. anyway I mean, it's just making it more of a burden, at least for the good people, like mm -hmm. if you will, to come over. Um, we can dedicate those resources and say, go find the much fewer people that are actually being a problem. Because think about it right now. You have a oh, so, 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 hundred people so coming you're saying, over. Let's let's let them come in and do yeah. bad stuff and then we'll do something. No, I'm That's saying what you're saying right there. I'm saying though. right now we're dedicating a whole lot of people to dealing with one hundred people that might want to come over, right? Out of that one hundred people, let's just for numbers sake, let's mm -hmm. say that five are gonna be problems. Okay. Whatever problems mean. How are you gonna find those right? The, the process that we have now isn't stopping the five from coming over, nor is it dealing with the five what, after they what, get here. Okay, so right? the, it's not doing either one of them. Okay. The five are still getting over yep. here in some way. So we're making it more difficult for the 95. What I'm saying is make it easier for the 100 all to come over here. And then because we don't have to dedicate our resources uh, to, that's, to that's, making it difficult to the 95. That's great in theory until that one kills your wife. I mean anybody. I that, I bet you. I promise you that once you once your wife that's gets a, killed, that's you'll be like, wait a minute. That is why do we not stop this? That's, I mean, that's, that's our problem, the, that's, right? That's the genesis of every single law. Oh well, we got to have this law. No, no, but no. Hold on. Once again, child? I'm what not. I'm life? not saying law. Oh, sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not saying law. I'm saying that this is what this. There's a reason why we do this. Well, who cares if that five gets in and they hurt somebody? The people who are being right, attacked right. care. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not saying who cares that the five are getting in here. But, we'll, but saying, we'll let them do it, and then we we'll I'm find saying out who's bad. The five are already getting in in the first place. What? Well, okay. And we back are not, to a wall. And so, therefore, uh -huh. we take the resources that we're making it difficult on the 95, who are not a problem. Right. So there's no reason to make to make it difficult. I agree so with you on that. Yeah. Move the difficulty there, and we take the same resources, and we say your job instead of making the process difficult. Now that something's gone wrong. Your no. Your your challenge is to find the five that are that we're going to be here one way or another. Find them where, where wherever you or wherever around the where, country, where, go find how, the five. That's what you're telling me. No, it's not like you got to go find the five. It's a, what, what I'm saying is the five get here uh -huh. and they're not being dealt with. Whatever the case, maybe they do commit a crime, maybe they don't. Whatever. If they don't commit a crime, if they come over here and they're and they're not committing a crime, then they kind of become the nine part of the ninety five. Right. Right. If they come over here and they commit a crime, we need resources to go and find them. Figure After out what's the going fact. on. Right. We're doing that anyway. So we're already doing that. Okay. So and those I don't my believe, complaint. My I don't believe that a wall is going to make it any better because you're still good. I mean, are you familiar Dude, with you, how people okay. get smuggled here? Okay, but yes, they but, get smuggled in cars. Like they literally put them into like weird places, into weird compartments in the car to smuggle them over. They have tunnels. Underneath the ground. Oh, the so now we're going to the argument of what are we going to do? Nothing then? We'll no, just let, let, this what is, I'm saying is, hold on. Uh, let me put it up to you. <laughs> like, already got hold tunnels. on. You want proof? Well, that's what I'm saying. Then you shut those things down. You go through those things. Those things should, ought not to be there no matter what. Right. Because they're still going against what you think is the right way. We can't have the bad ones coming. Right. They're still coming in anyway. So here, remember my example of okay. the Vatican? They had a wall. You know what it kept me from doing? 
it said, okay, this is the way we come in. Now, when I came but around- you're 95. But, but they don't know- Part of the but, 95. Okay, uh, with an assumption, I'm part of the 95. I mean, I'm pretty confident on that. Oh, I think I am. <laughs> but they don't They don't know that. Right. In Italy, they don't know right. that I'm part of the 95. So here's what's happening. Here's what they said. And, and maybe this is what we need to look at. And maybe even what- Maybe what I'm saying, and you, you'll come around, is that in, in this, they, they have a wall. goes all the way around it. They have this area, Ottaviano is the name of the street, that leads right up to where it right. needs to be. Okay. So you come in through basically Ottaviano. Come on in, guys. Come see what right. we got. Okay. There I kind of see you. I see what's going on. I got right. your behavior, whatever that happens to be. Sure, sure. So the wall works. Let's let, let's be honest. Why do we have fences? Why do we have walls around our house? Why do we put locks on our doors? Because they work. It keeps the right people in, the wrong people out. That's all I'm saying. I mean, unless somebody breaks in. Right. Okay. Which is usually the case. The lawbreakers. Okay. But you're saying let's catch them after. I'm like, well, well hang on. Like, why can we not so do let both? Me why can, let me why? back up. Let me back up. Are you saying then, since you're an advocate of like fences and that they keep bad people out and locks yeah. keep people that's why, out? That's why, I, that's why I, every, even mm -hmm. in front of your neighborhood, mm -hmm. I locked, and you got a nice neighborhood. I still locked so, my truck. So are you saying the majority of crimes occur? With people who don't have fences and don't have locks. No, no, but what? But hold on. Why do we do it to keep? My dad should always say we keep the honest ones honest. Right, right. Okay. And so, so we why do would it. we do nothing? We do nothing we, then. Just well, let them all fly in. Well, what I'm or saying is, we do is, something to make some effort to make it stop. So they can still kick in your door, but right. you still lock it. Right. I understand. Because that. you're you want that level of protection. Right. Guess and, what a wall does? Yeah, and, it's and a and level of protection that says I understand. We can that. keep someone out. But here's the here's the catch. I am saying that I don't want anybody in my house. Who's not invited, right? Anybody. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you're a criminal or not, right? Like right. I, like I invited you in my house. You came and you knocked today. You knocked on the door. Uh, we unlocked the door. We opened the door did you, for you. Because did you let them come, come in? Come Hold in. on. Did you let them come in and say, hey, I want to be in your house? Did you let them, did you keep your door wide open and say, come on in? And then once I you mean, stand, some friends once, do actually. No, but once you're standing in my some living room, once you're in my living room, now right. you ask me, it's okay to be, is that how you did it? No. Oh, why not? But. Why not? Because it's personal property. Okay, hold on. But so technically, our country is not, our personal property. If you look at it as a country, no, as a country, it's not. So no, Europe this, owns us. No, this this is my property. I have no ownership. Okay, in but any hold other on. Here's what I'm getting at. This is what you look at your own property. You go. This is a good way to guard and protect my property. Why could we not do that same thing as a country? This is a good way to guard and protect our country. I I don't. Th I think there's. I, I think your uh, the analogy, the comparison, it, it only works so far, because. When we're talking about an entire country, there is no particular ownership of the entirety of a country, right? It's not like a bunch of people are saying, okay, well, we want Europeans okay, but, to come here, hold, but not. Hold on, take that, but take that same, take, take that same thinking then. South America. So let's say I own land right. along the border, and the government's not doing anything to stop the people. They're just flooding in across my property. Did, okay, same problem. It's the exact right. same pro Remember, right. not all the property is owned along the border is owned by the right. government, it's owned is, by but, private citizens. But that, so now that, they're invading their, and, and do you not care about a, their private, and their private a, property and, rights? And that is a trespass, no, that, that's, uh, totally. And if they, so if so they broke the wall. If an individual wants uh -huh. to build a wall, it is their property to build a wall. I do not believe that it is appropriate for the government because the government has to either own the property itself, which technically I, I would disagree that right. it actually owns property, but for and for of, what they do, they should for, for not getting into that particular right. Logic, <laughs> uh -huh. right. They have to build a prop. They have to build it on property that they own, or they have to take property from somebody. Um, so if I'm living on the border and I say, "Why well, would prefer not to have a wall? I'll deal with anybody that comes across my property myself." Okay, and they might say, "No, no, we're going to build a wall," and so then they would take some of my property away from me. Right. So I think that I think that our comparison only but goes that would fall under so eminent far. domain, then wouldn't it? Right, which okay. I'm not a big fan well, of. Well. Uh, we, that's again. It's constitutional, so there's things a that different. Would, right, I'm not, <laughs> often for the reasons it's huge. Yeah, it's a whole other conversation. conversation. Right. So ultimately, what I think is that the the biggest challenge I think that we face as a country is that um, with the issue of immigration is that we make it difficult for the good people to come over while we're not making it um, uh, while we're not really solving the problem of bad people coming over. So what I would rather do is divert our resources and say, since we're not already doing, and I don't, I don't, and I know you and I disagree. I don't agree that a wall will necessarily stop the bad people from coming over. I think they'll just find another way. So to me, that's how it always works. The bad people will always but find a way. As Somebody, you do that, you start focusing them into because, an area where you can go, here's where they are. 
I, I, right now, I, wide open. I close you my can't. door and most people aren't going to come in. I lock it. Again, most people aren't going to try to come in. But there will be the few people that want to come in no matter what. Mm -hmm. And they will try to figure out how to pick my lock and how, but, the door. But in, how much easier is that to find them then? Say, oh, and, they're coming. They're going to bust in my door. Well, my door is right there. Right. So that's where we got to know we got to watch them. When you have nothing, it's wide open. Come in wherever you want. How are you going to watch all that? Well, and that's I mean, our problem right now. We're not. I mean, I mean, they can come in through the door. They can come in through the window. You you know, I mean, you know, they're not going to bust through the wall. I mean, right. Okay. So guess what? They're not going to bust through the wall. So it is going to force them they to might. go to an area. They, they may dig underneath the wall. Okay. But right? remember, there's wait. Well, hold on. They may now, climb so, over the wall. So now are we now making the argument? And the crappy wall that we built. They I may say, it now it sounds like we just, we're just making the argument of what type of wall do we build. Right. Okay. Here's what I'm getting at. I love the idea of people coming into the country. I love the idea that I'm fine with that. Once again, I think that we have a right to go, who are you? Right. What's your purpose here? Yeah. I think that's part wide open. We don't get to pull that off. Sure. That's why I, I like a wall that says, okay, listen, here's what we're going to do. We don't mind if you come over. Hey, dude, come on. We want you to come and we want you to enjoy this greatest, I truly believe as much as I can play right. about this country, it's the greatest country in the world. Right, right. Okay? So here's what we're saying. You want to be a part of us? We want you to be a part of us. Right. Fill out your paperwork, stay there. Mm -hmm. Wait over there. I'll open the door. Come on in, dude. Let's go. Now right. that I know who you are, what's your purpose? Same thing you do at your house. The same thing. Hey, now I know that you're here. I know why you're here. I know what your purpose here is. Come on in. I'm fine with you. Right. So I think that we I, I think we can do that. I think that we can do both things. I, I don't think that we have to see the wall. Okay. Or maybe, and I think that maybe sometimes we get angry with wall because we attribute it to Trump now. He's hijacked right. the term. Sure, sure. It was just horrible. Because it's it's not like that. It's nothing like I hate you. And I it, no, it's just, we have an area. We want to protect our area. We're fine with you coming in. We just to make sure you're not coming in here to cause us problems. Right. Okay. So it's the same way, not terrorists, not gangs, but we don't want you coming in with no money, no plans. Right. You want to get on our system. We're going to pay for you for the next 30 years that you're here. Gotcha. We don't want to do that. Gotcha. So if we can kind of go, here's where we are. This is the area you come in. Now, once again, I think that I would agree. I think you would agree. I think people who've been through the process would agree. The process is horrible. Mm -hmm. It's a horrible process. Right. So why don't we focus on what the problem is? The problem is the process. How do we streamline these? How right. do we not take this five, six, seven years for somebody to come in here legally? Right. I think that's perfectly fine. I think that's perfectly fine. Let's shorten that down. Let's Listen, why can't it be two weeks or a month? Right. Like, why can't you be at your house and say, I, I want to go to America? And you right. from your house or whatever way you want to do it, you go, hey, here's my forms. Here's my paperwork. Right. The best that we can. Or if maybe your way is to say, hey, I'm going to go to the border mm -hmm. and I'm going to fill out my paperwork. I'm going to do. What if we had, and this is all extra. What if we had a holding area there? If we said, okay, listen, you're coming in, you're filling out your paperwork. It's going to take us a week to process you. Right. Here's where you stay. Yep. Now, technically it's, we have our wall. Right. You're on our property on the other side of the wall. Right. And you go, wait here. We'll, we'll give you your food and the water and we're going to take care of you while you're here. If during this time we get your process, you're done. Come on in. Best of luck to you. If you fail during that time, you got to go back, dude. Sorry. Hmm. Didn't work out for you. And then we we get, I think, what all of us want, but we get it in a safer way, in a way that we can kind of go, all right, we're making some effort here to rather than just open up wide and whoever comes in and then when they do something wrong, we'll fix it. Let's try our best to prevent it from happening. All right. What okay. else you got? Because we're up, we're up against time here. What else you got? I I'll go sure. with that. I, I, I'm go with good that. with I'll go All with right. that. You know what? I think we did a good job um, through a little bit of tense debate here, which was great. We had a little, you know, we can, you can have debate. It doesn't have I'll, to be. I'll be back next week. All right. He'll be back next we're, week. We're, we're probably going to see enemies. each other tonight. We right. like, it, it's yeah, fine. We're, we're good. Enemies. No, we're um, not at all. You know, and, and sometimes this debate is, it, it needs to happen because what we need, to, we need to do is we need to understand where the other person is coming from. So if you're a non-libertarian and you're trying to figure out, Hey, what's the libertarian position on immigration? There is no the libertarian position. No, despite that's his true. Fingers, no, no, I'll right? say, but if you're, if you're picking between one here I right. am. So <clears throat> there are two. There are at least two major thoughts, and one of them is an open borders situation where you allow people to come in, and then you deal with the pro any pot potential problems after the fact, which is kind of where I am. I'm not quite as open borders as some others. And then there are those who say, "Hey, we need to we need to close the borders in some way for some reason." Like some of them say, "We need to." deal with the welfare state before we have a more yes. open border system. Some of them will say, hey, we need to have a wall so that we can kind of funnel people in a particular direction and then that makes it easier to identify those who are coming over here that would cause us problems. Because I think that most libertarians would agree that um, people probably, I think most people would agree, maybe not even libertarians, but just in general, most people would agree, hey, we want people that are going to come over here and contribute to our yes. society. Yes, yep. 
right? And and they don't have to only contribute in, in doctors uh, and lawyers. Yeah, doctors and lawyers. They can come over here and they can be they can be the guy that opens his own grass cutting company. Yep. And you know, survives productive. and pays he's for just it. Productive. You know, he's productive. He's providing a great and valuable service. Yep. Right. Um, it may not be brain surgery. Yeah, it, you know, it might provide need, for him and his family. Right, they might, provi- and it keeps them from coming right. off the government for stuff, stuff along those lines. Yep. You know, it, it, it provides him an honest living, and that's what we want. We want people to have an honest living. So there you have it. Those are the those are the two primary positions. I'm more of an Ellis Island, so I have a a, a fairly open border, but kind of a limitation there. Um, and there's some disagreement here between Tub and I, and that's okay. There's disagreement with other other libertarians. There's pro- well, there's right. there's problems with libertarians right, agreeing know, right? with stuff. All right. So, <laughs> but with that, all that being said, I think it's time now to jump into that bill review. So let's go and see what we've got. But I know I'll be a law someday. At least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. I can edit that out. All right. So today. We are going to talk about the Australia pandemic bill that they just put that, that you might have recently heard about. Now, you might be asking yourself, DL, you talk about like local bills and you talk about state bills and you talk about federal bills in the United States. Why would you talk about some other country's bill? What does it matter to us? Well, here's the thing everybody has probably been watching Australia in what many call fall. Right? <laughs> and they just they just put together this this pandemic bill. It's called the pandemic management bill. And um, you know, a lot of people have been looking at Australia and they look at other countries and they say, you know, we should do what that country does. Mm-hmm. So in light of that, I thought, well, maybe we should take a look at what they're doing and see if that's something that we'd actually want to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bill up and we're gonna take a look at it. And we're gonna um, we're gonna see how it goes. So let's see here. Let's now, open this bill. Now, up. as you bring this up, yep. Remember yesterday, I sent you a text. It was a hundred and sixteen pages. Is right. What this was. Yes. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with a hundred and sixteen pages? So I cheated. That's what I did. Now you can go ahead and bring it all up and do what you're gonna part, and then I'll get to my cheating portion. Right. So let's see here. We're gonna get this up here. You know, and it's funny that you when you when he texted that I. Um, as I'm pulling this up, I was um, uh, I was not able to respond right away in the way that I wanted to, and um, you know maybe give him a hard time or whatnot. Um, but uh, it made me think back of a tweet where I uh, there was this kind of debate about whether or not podcasting was work, and I oh. was like, well, yeah, podcasting is work because I. You were going to try to make me read 116 pages. I tried to get him to read 116 pages. uh, Of Australian law. Of Australian law. Yeah, not even like something, hey, Tub, here's what's about to be in your world. No, no, some random stuff across the way. The the problem I think that we run into as you get ready to bring this up is that we have to be cautious. We have to be willing to see because let me be honest with you. Like you start watching, like I I actually watch probably more Australian news than I probably should. It seems odd. Right. Uh, Like on YouTube, they have their news stations and stuff. You'll watch them. And and I like to always see, to be honest with you, I like to see uh, what other countries think of America sometimes. You're like, hey, we're, you know, I know how we see things because we're biased. Right. I like to find some other people that aren't involved. Like they don't have a dog in the fight just to see what they're saying. And so many times this happens throughout. This happens. And so. If we, we need to pay attention to these type of things, because this could be something that somebody in this country usually goes, hey, wait a minute. You know, Australia is doing this and this is what it's doing. And then we go, oh, because how many times have we seen, especially lawmakers sometimes, well, you know what they're doing over in Europe. I think we should find a way to implement that here. Right. Well, and then I'm like, yeah, how many times you go, well, go move to Europe then if that's your plan. But right. we, we, we don't live in a vacuum. There are other things that happen. And so I think we always should be aware of some things that, because what they're referring to as COVID, we're dealing with COVID. Right. And they're going to see that the way that they're dealing with it, and if we're not careful, we're 116 pages later also. Right. All right, folks. So I finally was able to get this up on the screen. Uh, so here we are. And just to, just as a matter of clarity, I want to I do want to point out that this is actually not a bill for um, all of Australia. Apparently, it no, only applies no. to just Victoria. Yep. Um, which is, I'm not sure what they call them, but one of their regions. They call them states. Oh, states. They okay. do call them states. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm not terribly familiar with the country, you know, the government and, and how things run. Um, so I'm not really going to be doing, doing too much comment on that matter. Okay. Uh, but what did you, what was your first impression after reading all 116 Oh, pages? when I, when I finished all 116, all right, I can't continue that line. Cause Cause I read at least 75% of it. Did you really? Yeah, roughly. For, for real? Yeah. 
Like, what? you clearly need other things to do. Your job is not giving you enough work. Something's happening where if you're taking, because, because so here's what I found out. I, I don't know if, are we just driving in or are you? Yeah, what? dive right okay. in. All right. So here's what I found out as I was reading up about it. Um, what they've had going on is they've already had laws in place. Mm-hmm. They had laws that would expire every four weeks specific right. to COVID. You're like, okay. Right. And, and, and so then they would have to renew them every four weeks. And so what they were saying with this one here is that they were trying to do a permanent, something right. permanent. Right. So it gets past these. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, without getting into this yet, right. I'm not against that four-week thing. The four-week thing, they say, okay, here, and I think we could have learned something from that alone. Right. Like we say, hey, for the next four weeks, here's the plan. Right. Okay. Um, and then here's the thing is, if we don't need these anymore, we let it lapse. Right. Okay, so instead of this, because we're running down the area, we're making these new laws, and they're just becoming laws, and they're going to stay there, which is what Australia is falling into here. Right. Um, so Victoria, uh, specifically. So inside of this, they don't want to have to keep dealing with every four weeks having mm-hmm. to review it again. So they go to permanent. So here's this quote that I found real quick about this. It, okay. This is what it says. The overriding concern is that the bill, if passed, may allow the Victorian government effectively to rule the state of Victoria by decree for the foreseeable future without proper parliamentary oversight or the usual checks and balances on executive power. Right. And I did see a hint of that in the um, in the bill. Okay. Um, because I don't know their government structure. Right. I'm not sure what checks and balances are supposed to exist necessarily. They put boards and stuff together. Like right. what we would so, think of a board, not necessarily government, but a level of board. So I, I kind of just, review. I try to just kind of ignore the, any of that because okay. I didn't want to dive into... It, and I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to start saying, oh, well, this is why. That's this how they is, do it. And, you know, mm-hmm. and then be entirely, and be t- entirely wrong. Or I'm not, okay, that. What did you it. just do? <laughs> just what did, did you just? <laughs> this is getting So every, remember Crikey. the Chris. We got a half back like the Chris. Remember? Crikey, so mate. This is, oh my. It's getting worse. Oh my all right. Goodness. All right, all right. So all right. I am clearly not Australian. <laughs> um, and if I ever meet one, they may assault They're me. They're going to beat you down. Like, if they happen to see you this. Like a, this sounds terrible. All right, so um, page four and five are where I first uh, have some notes highlighted here. So we'll skip on over to them. And as we go down here, we can see here it is at the bottom of page four. And it says it's under the purposes, right? So this is the preliminary. This is what they got for the purposes, right? And they say, number one, now they got four purposes here that I wanted to point out. Uh, number one, to amend the Public Health and Well-Being Act of 2008. Okay. And then um, section B, to amend the Public Health and Well-Being Act of 2008. Oh, same thing. Sorry, my bad. Um, but they do have them different. So, so, they, so they have them slightly different. One is in relation to fees, in relation, in relation to the to... effective management of okay. pandemics, and then one is in relation to fees for detention of purpose, purposes. So they're amending this this same particular public health and well being act of two thousand eight in different ways. And then we go down here, and then in C it says to amend the Infringements Act of two thousand six to broaden the scope of what constitutes special circumstances in the act and the Fines Reform Act of 2014 to and to make consequential amendments. Anytime I see consequential amendments, I kind of get concerned. But consequential amendments to acts for the purposes of the con, uh, concessional infringement scheme in the Public Health and Wellbeing Act of 2008. So the first thing I want to point out is that we're amending other bills. Right. Right. No, Not even bills. new. Legisl- uh, yep. um, sorry, uh, statutes. Okay. What we, what we might call statutes. Um, and so these are, we're amending are we existing laws. Yeah, we're back. Okay. Uh, we, we're not showing it at the moment. Okay. So we're, we're amending uh, 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 existing laws. So now, so now, like you were talking about, like this, you know, we had this like four week thing going on. It was temporary. So what this does is it says, we're going to change the law permanently, mm-hmm. right? Or at least until it gets changed again. Again. Uh-huh. Okay. And that could go even further or it could, you know, remove them. Unlikely to remove them because that's not that's not what government does. Government doesn't do that, right? All right. So then the next thing over on page six that I and what I did was I just read through it and I highlighted some things and I skipped over some of it because like I just kind of skimmed over some of it where it was talking about like there was some like procedural stuff and like you know I'm like okay I don't really care about your procedures you know like I don't even understand your estate I don't care about your procedures yeah they were talking about like how you document it how you disseminate the information to the public and so on and so forth and I was like okay I'm not really too worried about that. Um, you know, because what I want to know is what are you going to do to the people, yeah, right? right. That, that's really what I care yep. about. So the next thing I've, I noticed, 
Um, and this is under the definitions. Um, so they got uh, amendments relating to pandemic declarations. They got definitions here. And most of the definitions seem pretty standard, you know, like disease of a pandemic, potential, C subsection C, whatever. You know, so they're, 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 a lot of them are kind of intuitive you right. know, when you start reading them. But this one I thought was interesting because it, it'll come up later. Disease vector. Okay. Okay. Disease vector, it's a very specific term. It means an animal other than human being, including a bird or insect, that is capable of carrying a pathogen that A, is transmissible to human beings, and B, is capable of causing disease in human beings. Okay? So, it doesn't sound so bad. We're just saying, hey, this is other opportunity for us to be infected. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we're going to continue on. So, then we move down to page 8, and feel free to stop me at any time. All right? And so, we're going, again, we're walking through this bill here real right. quick. Um, and I didn't highlight too terribly much. We'll, we'll keep it simple. No, yeah, no, you, you, you're you pretty good there. You didn't... Um, so so we get in here, and on pa on on page eight, we've got, um, I highlighted this notion of being potential. So let me read a little, little snippet here. It says, a pandemic disease or disease of pandemic potential may pose a material risk of substantial injury or prejudice to the health of human beings, even when a... The rate of community transmission of the disease in Victoria is, is low. low, or B, there have been no cases of the disease in Victoria for a period of time. So what we're doing now, we're talking about this idea of potential, and they're putting in, into law this notion that potential has meaning. Okay, so we go down a little bit more. So with that, in the summary thing here, it says there's a concern uh, giving the premier and the health minister so much control. That's how they put it. Absolute, unreviewable power to indefinitely keep Victorians in lockdown. Yes, and that is exactly what I, what I, so folks, I just want to point out, I sent this bill over to him. And I said, all right, hey, read, please read this bill. He texted me and he said, podcasting is not supposed to be work. That's not what he said. I, but I I'm meant just, it. That, that was, he meant that it. was understood. I'm just making the joke because I got ragged on Twitter. Uh, about whether or not podcasting was actual work because so, someone was like, dude, are you getting paid? And I'm like, I don't get paid for a lot of things. That doesn't make it not work. Come on. It's still work. Crazy. I mean, I got to go out and do you stuff know? around my... And, well, I don't, I and if I want to get paid, I'm going to have to put in the work up front so that somebody will say, oh yeah, you're worth paying. Yes. You know? So at any rate, hopefully hopefully going through this bill, someone's going to be like, man, I really want to pay that guy. So we'll see. Those guys. Those, those, guys. those guys. All right. 90-10 here. Um, at any rate, so going on, it says, for the purpose of this act, an infectious disease is a pandemic disease at a particular time if, at that time, there is a pandemic outbreak of that infectious disease. Okay, that seems fair enough. Yep. For the purpose of this act, an infectious disease is a disease of pandemic potential. And that's potential. Potential disease is huge. Of pandemic potential at a particular time if, A, at that time, the infectious disease has the potential to give rise to a pandemic, but is not yet a pandemic disease, right? So now we're changing the law to include, not just say, hey, we're in this pandemic, we here's how we're defining mm -hmm. a pandemic, and we as the government feel that it's our obligation to do something. They're now saying, look, there's this thing called a potential, you know, this is potential that we need to have into law and um, have the opportunity to do something and, about. And, you know, people will read that as they're protecting us. Right. They're protecting us. Right. This is going to be great. So here's something interesting, and we're not going to get into it too much, but the secretary, and I believe that's the secretary of health or whatnot, whatnot yep. but they are given special powers. And one of those special powers here on page 10, I've highlighted it, is the secretary may, may appoint authorized officers. Okay? So those are basically just people that can right. act here's, on behalf of the government, right? So here's what I have here. The new rules also allow authorized officers, such as police officers, work safe inspectors and health service providers to take actions and give directions that they believe are reasonably necessary to protect public health. Yes. So so what we've got here is we got now this new bill, this pandemic management bill that is telling us there could be a, an outbreak, there could be a pandemic, or there might be a potential for a or, pandemic. Or it might just be some people and who feel good need, this weekend. And we need power to deal with this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we also want to be able to appoint authorized officers, people to act on our behalf. Okay. So let's move along. We're going to go now to um, page 11 and 12, where I've highlighted a little bit more on the potential area. And here's the thing. And this is kind of going to what you were saying, like there's no checks and balances. Right. And that's where you get a hint of this here. It says, okay. 
this is the premier and I'm not and I'm not entirely certain what a premier what the status over there is I don't know if that's like the equivalent of their president yeah that sounds like it might be I mean it sounds like a, like the governor the governor of because they have you know, sections yeah right so but I'm not entirely certain uh but it but it, but it does read as it's somebody of a, a significant importance the premier may make a declaration under this subsection a pandemic declaration if the premier is satisfied that there is a serious risk to public health arising from a a pandemic disease or b a disease of pandemic potential Poten see potential. potential is huge and and, right. and and they seem to just kind of throw that one out right. a little bit right I so so then we move on to page 12 and we get down into some more subsections the premier may make a pandemic declaration whether or not at the time the declaration is made that pan a the pandemic disease is present in victoria so it doesn't even have to be present have to be, yep. right we can make a pandemic declaration or b the disease is a disease of pandemic potential potential that is present they in say victoria. potential a lot right that so, should make us very so what nervous saying is hey we can we can make a pandemic declaration in one of two instances um it's it's present in victoria right the the, the pandemic disease mm -hmm. is or the disease is one that they've determined could be pandemic. So any disease, so effectively- So right are now, they saying with that, that even if it's not here yet, but it's over there and there's no, a no. kids that might be here, so, then so, we better do something so, now? So right now what they're saying is if the disease is here and, we, it's, here. And, it's, okay. and it's at a pandemic level, we mm -hmm. can make a pandemic declaration. Okay. okay that kind or of it's sense. the potential. Or if it has <laughs> the potential to become a pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Um, so then we go on, it says the validity, this is, I love this part, the validity of a pandemic declaration is not affected by either of the following. A, the pandemic declaration being made on the basis that the premier was satisfied at the time of making the declaration that there was a serious risk to public health arising from a disease of pandemic potential, but the disease was a pandemic disease at the time. It gets really, really confusing to read that. So my best understanding of this, um, because of the way that it is written, is that what they're saying, the validity of a pandemic declaration is not affected if uh, there was this risk from the potential, but it was a pandemic disease at the time. Oh, you so, cleared that up beautifully. So it sounds to me like if it's a pandemic, but we didn't realize it, and we called it a potential. That's kind of how I'm reading this. I'm not really sure. I could be reading this entirely wrong. This this almost sounds like they had weapons of mass destruction. Right. <laughs> uh, so like it it was here. It was doing something. It almost it almost sounds retroactive, like. You know, like you didn't know it, you just thought it, but it turned out it was, but it wasn't. It's, it's just really confusing language, which I, I I'm I know I'm trying to clear it up. Yeah, and, and and I'm not, and you're not, which is kind of telling. That, that exactly is it. I'm I, reading this and hit, let me because I I think I'm a relatively intelligent guy, and if I have trouble understanding what that means, and I'm having to try, kind of guess, and I may be guessing wrong, wildly wrong. How many, like, how many million? Other it's are the same thing. Like, right, like I, I can tell you, like, I often tell people that, like, inside the church and stuff, I, I, I try to make the complex simple. I right. try to, to kind of look at it and say, this is where we are. And you're going through that and, and like, right. I, I would love to find a way to make this. It just, okay, you want me to make that simple? Control. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is all control. just control. Right. So, are you still going through the bill still? So, yeah, we got still got two pages. 116 pages. So, we're going to, well, we're not going to go through all 116 pages. That would okay. be crazy. Um, I only want you to read that many. We're not gonna uh, no, we're not actually going to talk about it. Just right. waste your time so reading it. So now let's go. Let's go and get something a little bit more interesting. So now we know that the government here is saying, look, we're going to have control mm -hmm. if there's an actual pandemic or if there's a possibility for a pandemic, right? And do they do, do they define what the possibility of a pandemic means? They might in some other document. I didn't really see it in this one. Okay. Um, they might, you know, because they do reference other legislation that they already have. So so it's possible that it's that it's referenced elsewhere. I don't know. Okay, um, so here under pandemic orders, and it says the minister may make a pandemic order. So the way that it works is they declare a pandemic and then they make a pandemic order, right? We have something very similar in the United States. You can say, all right, we're going to declare a, a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can create an executive order based on but that. Start running through, but it has to apply to but this. It's based on that, yep. right? And, and here in Jacksonville, the mayor did that once um, just by verbal 
but he's actually but our our statute our local statute says you have to put it out in print and you have yes. to disseminate it to the yep. to the news media it wasn't that long ago and 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 this actually happened yep. and they did not do that they just said hey we're going to have a curfew here and i said and people started questioning what? the legality of that and and mm-hmm. i did i st- uh, i was on twitter on our libertarian party of duval county and i started standing on the neck of the the uh the city mm-hmm. uh city of jacksonville their their twitter account and they finally the next day uh, about ten hours later, twelve hours later, they finally published everything that they were supposed. But at that point, to. it was already done. It was already done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that uh, I think that contributed because we got a lot of attention on that uh, when I when I did that, and then we even got picked up by the local media who said that the Democrats were hammering him because he was a Republican. So the Democrats were hammering him, and then they said even the Libertarian Party was questioning. Even it. those Libertarians right, were doing right, something, which is crazy because it really should have been the other way around, right? Like, the Libertarians yeah, were hammering like, him, that's the and point. even the Democrats. Yeah, because you expect right, the Democrats right, to. Right, yep. like, like of course the Libertarians are. The, well, of course <laughs> they. No, did you say with that? Of course well, they were. Well, of course we are. They're of course like, the hey, we're the government. Good. We're no shh, quiet. We're Libertarians. <laughs> we don't listen to you. Like, no, but anyway, back to this bill. So the minister may make a pandemic order. So now we know what a pandemic order is, right? So this is after they've declared that there's yep, a pandemic. Like we're down the line now. The minister may at any time on or after the making of a pandemic declaration uh, make any order, a pandemic order, that the minister believes is reasonably necessary to protect public health. So the minister just has to reasonably believe this. Yep. Okay. Now, there is some provisions in here about working with like uh, th- their equivalent of the secretary of health or whatever. So yes. th- th- it's not just like this government person but, that just but let's, wakes up and says, you know what, there, clearly there's something going on. I can yeah. smell it in the air, and therefore I now have an order. But like let's think about this. But let's be serious about this for a second. Okay, so we have a president and we have the CDC. Right. Are they straying from each other at all? Right, right, right. So no, because what ultimately what you have is the person in right. charge has the people that he's yep. placed there. So yep. they're really going to walk the same I, line anyway. I, and I won't read this, but if I read this correctly last night at you know 11 o'clock at night, what I understood it to, um, that the the government officials need to just consult with, they don't necessarily they don't even have to they don't have to heed so, what they say. Just, like we talk I, about, you think it's I bad? Can oh, oh well. With you, and then you might say, yeah, it's not really a pandemic. I guess it could be if you really okay, it could be, could be right. Good. Like, yeah. like, and I can go with that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's I think that's what this uh, pr- uh, provides for them. So uh, that the minister believes is reasonably necessary to protect public health. And then it goes on and says a pandemic order may include, but is not limited to an order. And then um, we're going to get into uh, a, a little bit here. So A, that requires persons to be detained in pandemic management area for the period specified in the order. Okay, moving down. B, that requires the detention of persons in a pandemic management area be extended for the period specified in the order. So, so they can extend it. This right here, I, from what I remember on my cheat sheets, um, this will give an individual authorized officer the power to restrict restrict movement, mm-hmm. detain a person for a period, provide information, or even shut down. And this is what it went into. Even shut down a political protest. Yes. Because that's, they're having some issues over there right yep, now. Yep, and and yep. so now I will tell you that they, they made – some changes to this and before it got passed that was amended that was changed some gotcha that they couldn't just shut down a political protest gotcha but all the other stuff still stayed in place yep okay so continuing on uh c that restricts movement in a pandemic management area or that requires movement in into or from a pandemic management area so so they're they're, they're what's a allowed. pandemic management area uh they define it somewhere okay and i think it's just we're gonna... area that's covered under their pandemic so i think a pandemic if i'm in area, charge of this area say, hey, yeah, i can't a, go to the next state i've over. declared a pandemic in this particular area okay you know so like the city of jacksonville or the county of duval or whatever right okay so within those lines all right or it could be it could be well even because, more narrow, right well because well no we're gonna see and i actually have some notes and i actually watched some videos about um, if you go a little further north in Australia, where they put the camps in. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I, I didn't, I didn't even touch on that one. Yet. Oh okay, okay, yeah. So we'll get there in a minute, I guess. But as a whole, like like I'm looking at this, and the whenever they start talking about restricting, keeping people, uh, that gets my attention, right? Because right. all, all they're really trying to do is, to, and, and the fact that they're very kind of vague on who those people are that can do it. Like right. they can make just regular police or whatever it happens to be, or this guy over here. Right. Um, so now he can restrict your movement. He can restrict the things that you're able to do and speak in, uh, during that time. Right. And I, I get nervous anytime you start, government starts restricting people from Absolutely. Moving. Absolutely. Unless it's out of our border. And it's yep. perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, then he's cool with so it. So then right? it's fine. But I'm talking about that inside of ours. Yep. And they start saying, hey, yeah, we're going to keep you here. So now here are some things that they, they, they straightened out because they changed 
When mm-hmm. I said by the time it got passed, in right. the initial plan, here are some things that they had. Uh, a maximum fine uh, could be $21,909. That's a weird amount, but okay. Uh, that's what they came up with. Well, it might have, don't they have a different currency? So maybe that's in. They use dollar, though. They keep using the term dollar. So uh, that might be, it might be similar. I'm sure, but. Okay. Okay. It, it may convert to something weird. Whatever else, yeah. Uh, now it says previously it was $1,817. Right. Okay. Uh, for an individual breaking a pandemic order, a hundred and nine thousand and forty four dollars. Previously, it was ten thousand nine hundred four dollars. Right. So they 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 are putting in these absurd amounts of fines if you go against this right. because. All right, everybody. So we are back. Had to take care of something with Liberty Sun there. So we were you were you were telling me about. Um, the the fines, the fines, the fines of it, yeah, and it, mo- uh, modified some of the fines. Yeah, but uh, but it's, this is still even after this is the after up. Like this, right. they, these are still excessive. Right. Like these are the. But here, here's what people will say: oh, I better do it because I can't afford right. not to. Right. And, yep. and, and so by financial restraints, you get people to conform. Right. So continuing on down this list of things yes. that the premier has the authority to do under this in a pandemic. Right. So let's see. Where are we here? Uh, that prohibits or regulates gatherings, whether public or private, in a pandemic management area. Now, that might have changed. Maybe they uh, maybe they adjust it because that would seem to me to include protests because we say, hey, this is a pandemic area. You cannot have yeah, protests was the um, only one that they specifically said they can't mess with. Gotcha. Um, so continue on. That requires the use of personal protective equipment in a pandemic management area. So it's basically your mask and right. whatever else. Uh, that prohibits or regulates the carrying on of activities, businesses, or undertakings in a pandemic management area that requires the provision of information, including information about the identity of any person, the production of documents, or the keeping of records. So, huh. papers, please. There, that requires the provisions of information, including information about the identity of any person, the production of documents, or the keeping of records. Right. Um, okay. So if they need to produce documents about what's going on or who's mm-hmm. there or whatever, okay. um, that requires the medical, I love this part. And I, when I say love, I don't mean, love. right. Uh, that requires the medical examination or testing of persons in a pandemic management area or as a condition of entry to a pandemic management area. So therefore you have to, cons- you have, you have to be you have to, tested, uh, tested, whether you want to or not, um, even you if you're fine, uh, that requires the quarantining destruction or other management of disease vectors in a pandemic management area if you remember earlier i pointed out that disease vectors was any animal that may be able to carry a virus that it could infect a human so they can kill your what's dog what's the purpose that's i, said, what's I don't the know purpose? if that's quite the purpose of it yeah but what's the purpose of even including that the, the, the what they're basically saying is they can quarantine destroy or uh or any other management of disease vectors right now it wouldn't make sense to worry about the local birds, right? Right. You know, unless maybe they were under some authority, like, hey, this is a protected bird. So then they could say, well, we need to be able to have, you know, some authority to deal with this this infected bird that's flying around. But I think of it. It's got to be. Some, like, be some reason why I they did that. I think this is more like if you because we know that the COVID virus can jump from human to animal. So if you're a farmer and you have animals there, and they need to, and, and they determine that you have been infected, you're in a in a court. Uh, you're not in a you're the monkey area, from outbreak, but you're in an area, <laughs> a pandemic area, and they've determined that a lot of your cattle are infected, that they have the legal the right authority to, come in to destroy, destroy all your... your cattle, because that could potentially. Because one now, of the problems with the vectors here's one of the problems that I understand with the vectors, and I could be wrong. I'm not a I'm not a specialist in this, but my understanding is that. Part of the mutations can occur in any vector. So if you get COVID, I get COVID. It could mot- it could mutate in you, and then jump. Then that mutated version could jump to somebody else. Mine could also mutate if I had a dog, and that dog got infected. It could yeah. mutate in the dog and jump to me. Here's right? where the libertarian me runs to. Runs to not walks, not right. slowly get right. there. Runs to. All right. So you and I, we're cool. All right, and we are on some form of government together. Okay. Right. And so all of a sudden, the guy that I know is over there and he says, hey, listen, he goes, I think that, and he's running cattle, we'll say. Mm-hmm. And the guy next to him is running cattle also. Right. So he comes to me and says, hey, I think 
that that guy's thing is, I think they're, I, I think they have something. Right. You need to go destroy them. Right. And all it really could be is a commercial problem. Like, could be. Yeah, and it's all financial. Right. It's like, and, and so what stops him from going to this guy who's friendly with right. on side of, oh, yeah, we need to go take care of that. Right. And wipes. See, whenever you leave yep. stuff like that open, it yep. leaves it open to corruption. Yeah. And, and, and we'd have to dig in further to know. Like what kind of boundaries ex- might yeah, that's, exist? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Is um, is it possible that then one guy with one cow who does next to he takes one of his bad ones, right? Throws I mean, them to the possible. outside and yeah, hey, yeah. I, you, you know, like there's so like it's so absurd, right? But you always have to understand there's a reason why things get done. Like like you go oh, through yeah, a lot yeah. of bills and laws and stuff, and you see you ever come across like some odd stuff like what? Right, right. But then you realize you see, things will come out like oh. Here's why that's included, yep. and sometimes it's a it's a pet thing. It's it's a specific uh, legislator type thing. Right. Like, oh, I want this for me, and they give it to them because they're trying to pass a bigger thing. Right. So, there's I'm telling you, there's something that doesn't sit right about, and right. I didn't read that. I'm getting yeah. this from you right now. I mean, yeah. Like I'm like that's just something's not right there. Yeah, I read it, and my first thought was they can uh, they have the authority to kill your dog if your dog happens to be test positive for COVID or any pandemic disease. Right, like it doesn't have to be COVID necessarily; it could be any disease. So hold on, but then, but if they lumped animals because it didn't say that with people and animals, and so if they can kill your dog, they finally come and start saying, "Well, I can kill you now." Well, no, I hope it doesn't go that far. But that's no. like that's like some movie. But that, that, like, but but here's the thing: um, this is this is amending existing laws. Right. In the future, this can it could be right, mm-hmm. like totalitarian states. That's how they many of them operate. Mm-hmm. Right. So now let's move on to this last okay. point that I want to make. Uh, this last thing I highlighted, and I think this is probably the most concerning. Okay. It says it's under to whom a pandemic order may apply, and this is a pandemic order may be expressed to apply to the following: a all persons, b specified classes of persons, or c specified persons. So. If you don't agree, like we can, okay, everybody, like, well, listen, I, I, right. when you say everybody falls into this one, you kind of go, okay, we get it. You, you right. know, it sucks, but this is where we're at. Right. But when you start saying this class of people right. or that person, right. now I can go after just any form of enemy, political right. enemy, anything right. along those lines. I'm like, oh no, they're, they're the problem. Right. Or, you know, assume for a moment okay. that the, uh, that the government truly, let's just, let's just take it at the, um, let's give the government a slight benefit of the doubt. No, oh. it's not. That's not Whoa, really a thing turn, we do. Turn but, the mic off. <laughs> right, right, right. Imagine that the government really believes that there's a disease out there mm-hmm. that really needs to be addressed. And they're like, man, we really, you know, we hate doing this whole curtailing of liberties. But man, I mean, if we don't, we could like, like millions of people might die, right? Like, let's just say that they honestly really do believe that. So then they, they, um, they put out this pandemic. Uh, they say, hey, there's a pandemic. So they mm-hmm. declare a pandemic. Then they put out a pandemic order. Order. And they get resistance from people. It's just this hypothetical situation where people are like, yeah, I don't, I'm not really interested in your rules. And the government's like, yeah, but everybody, it'd be really nice if you would vaccinate because, you know, we, uh, we, we asked our scientists to work really, really hard. They worked overnight. You know, they're really sleepy now. But, hey, man, look what they produced. They got this new vaccine. A lot of people are like, mm, I don't yeah, know. Uh-huh. It seems, seems a little fast for me. I don't know if it I really want to. It's so hypothetical. It. it does. It does. <laughs> hypothetical. Okay. And so then then they have a large number of people that are saying, you know, I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass. I, I think I'd rather take my chances with the disease. Right. And I'm not too worried about the, the uh, you know, the disease compared to the vaccine because, I don't know, it just seems a little fishy. Yeah. Right. Um, so then the government here now has the authority to say, well, we have the uh, pandemic area and we have this class of people who are refusing to cooperate called the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated. <laughs> and so now we're going to create some specific pandemic orders that says you are not allowed to conduct business, as we showed up above. Uh-huh. You are not allowed to go to the local park. You're not allowed to walk outside. Uh, you're not allowed to do all these other things. But if you are vaccinated, then- you are permitted mm-hmm. to do all of these things. So now their specific group is the unvaccinated people. Correct. So, okay, everybody else is fine, right. but you guys, now so, we can, but now we can go right. at you specifically because there's yep. a law that says we can, yep. that you're going against. Yep. The mm-hmm. law has now been put into place and, to absolutely, and here's the funny thing. A lot of people are like, oh, that would never happen. Like, it, you're right. It might still not happen, but the law says it, they can if they need before, to. Before this law, before mm-hmm. this um, this bill, they could at least fall back and say the law doesn't permit that to happen. 
Yeah, like you. But now can, they now, have to acknowledge. Now it's an option. The ball, the the bill, uh, the, the the law legally permits the government to make it happen. But but it's written right. But look how there. look how far this goes though. Okay, so you went to unvax people. Right. Okay, and now unvax. Now what happens when it's DL? Could be DL's gone a little too far. He not only is he not vaccinated, but he's just going to walk around and do what he or he's going to whatever. Right. Whoop, nope, nope, nope. Because right. now it doesn't have. Because here's what happens: there's no longer a, a, this understanding of well, there's a hundred people who are getting no, no, no. Now we're getting one. Right, right. All the way down to now, the one. Now, what's interesting is right below it, it says a pandemic order must not be expressed to apply to a single named individual. So I don't understand what the difference between specified persons, persons and single and named individual is. You know exactly what that, you know that, that, that is? I assume what that means is. You mean is, DL? No, no, not DL. That guy. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, like, no, because, not that guy. Because if, if you know, I, I think that specified classes of person, all you have to do is just say, hey, you're a class of person. Now, there may be law that's, that designates what a class of what Yeah, but they want to talk about class of person. So, so here we're talking about so specific. It, it may be that the law right now doesn't define unvaccinated and vaccinated as a class of person, right? Like our law says, hey, if you're a um, a black person, you are a that is the class that you're in, not necessarily the, the um uh, financial class, but that's right. just a class yes. of people. Yep. That's how we've classified you, right? You you can be a white person, you can be an Asian person, you can be an immigrant, you can be a citizen, right? So our law defines classes of people like that, and our law currently does not define a class of person as being vaccinated or unvaccinated, right? Right, and, and that may be the case here, and, and that's and right step one. But all they need to do is just reclassify. Yep, right, and. And, and, and then they can later, like maybe next and, week and, or next and month. The thing is, what you have to understand is society will help classify that. You understand right. a lot of times we use terms so that society right. is accepting that's what we go with. Right. And it becomes the norm for a group of right. people. Right. So now it's not even that. It doesn't worry about trying to go and pass a law. Right. Society has deemed vaxxed right. and unvaxxed. So now I look at this and I say, when people look and say, well, we need to do what Australia has done. Well, you know, this isn't quite all of Australia. This is Victoria. I'm going to say... Absolutely not, because there's nothing in here that I want in our law whatsoever. Right. I think I, I think the only thing that I found that I found two things that were acceptable in here, sort of. Um, one was the pandemic order must not be expressed to apply to a single named individual. Okay, well I like that that you're not a single named individual, right? But I don't think that you should have a pandemic but, order for people anyway. Well, that's right, but that's um, going to be hey, a Jacksonville right. man as opposed and, to hey, DL. And then somewhere I didn't highlight it, but somewhere I believe it said that. Um, that that the uh, police were not permitted uh, to be used to enforce this or something like that. So, but I think that's where the importance of um, dedic uh, uh, declaring an officer. Uh -huh. Because, okay, so yeah, they said this group of people can't be the ones to like enforce this, to, to use to execute it necessarily. But then they just declare somebody, somebody else, else. An officer. Oh. Right? I think that's how it works. Again, I'm not terribly so, familiar with now Australian law. Now, I have law. two things to speak to that a little bit. Absolutely. Okay? Uh, the first one is, and here's what it says. However, if you are caught deliberately breaching a quarantine order mm -hmm. that has the potential to result in serious risk to health, then you could be fined up to $90,500 or two years imprisonment. A business could be fined up to $452,500, and they're talking about that could be reduced based on whatever. So now they're saying, okay, you're into this group, but here's what I really want to get at. Mm -hmm. Here's what they say about this. There's this idea, and they ask it specifically. Hey, if we want to grieve this, if we don't agree with this, what are our options? What are our right. outlets? And here's what it says. Pandemic orders will be lawful so long as the health minister believes they are reasonably necessary to protect public health. It will be very difficult to prove in a court case that the pandemic orders are unlawful so long as the minister believes they are reasonably necessary to protect public health. So here's what they're telling you. Tough. Right. Like, because that, that, their point was, okay, how do we regress this? How do we say, hey, we're, we're not down for this. Who do we go to? Who, right. who can we seek an exemption from? Yep. He goes, oh, oh by the way, you can try. But it's all going to go back to the health minister, right. CDC. So right. it's going to go back to the health minister, and they're going to go. But look how vague it is. It's it, it believes that they are reasonably necessary to protect right. public health. You got potential, reasonably necessary, and the reality is, how many times do people say, <clears throat> you know, like how many times has a man done something and somebody said, oh, man, that looks kind of dangerous, and then he complete he does whatever he does, and uh, no harm, no foul, and he's like, see, I knew nothing would happen. We didn't really know anything would happen. But you played the odds and you saw what happened. Odds, right? yep. and, and I think it's kind of similar in this case. Like you could be like, um, you know, you could you could basically 
declare that you knew more than you really did. That never happens as long with government. As nothing happened, right? Right. So they could be like, "We'll see," and we do that already. Uh -huh. They're like, "Well, it would have been worse if we hadn't have done anything." Right, mm -hmm. and you just have to, you, you know, you just have to speculate. You, you're playing that speculation game, and you would never know. You don't know if it would be worse. And there's any, I mean, that and that's a whole entire conversation in right. itself. Right. Well, so so here's the thing: is as they do this, and, and this is when I started looking up. I, I I ended up watching some videos and stuff. Um, just go north and slightly west a little bit from where this is passing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they have a place there called uh, Howard Springs. Okay. Okay. It's in Northern Territory in Australia. And they've truly made the camps there. Truly camps. Yep. And um, so there's this video um, of a lady who got put into there. She was exposed, didn't have it, never. Right. They, the police came to her house to yep. take her. I think I she lied. That. She's like, oh, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm negative. And she lied. But she's like, and they finally came. They, she said they went for a little while, came back, go, um, we have any proof. So now they spent their time specifically to find out what this. So anyway, the whole point is, is that guess what? They made her go to yep. this. And she was there for a couple weeks. Very strict guidelines. Like she couldn't do it. Like it, was, it was like truly imprisonment. Right. Never tested positive. Never had anything around it. She lost her job and everything while this is happening. Now, I would look at this. If I live down here in this part of Australia, what we're talking about in Victoria, and go, um, dude, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right up there. Like right up there, right. they're doing this. Right. It seems to me you would do everything you could to prevent this. As, right. Like you, everything as you could. But here's the problem. Government, as we're seeing way too much lately, they just want the control. Right. They've learned, hey, wait a minute. We can yep. use this to get the freedoms of people to right. us now. Yep. And, and, and I don't like the direction that this goes, no. obviously. And I don't know how. Is there not somebody inside of... This government body that goes, guys, this is a really bad idea. I, I you know, that, that's the interesting. I don't know enough about Australian government. Um, oh, really? To, no extensive to, study in that? Well, like, I don't know if they have like a Supreme Court, you know, equivalent mm -hmm. that would look at this and say, hey, this violates some of our core um, freedoms that we right. are, you know, we're supposed to be protecting. I don't know if they have something like that, like we do. I mean, we do, and it doesn't seem to be doesn't working. always do it. Exactly. You know, so like, uh, you know, if they don't, then it's even worse for them. Right? right. Like, I mean, a lot of people have suggested that the only reason that we're not either in the same state as a uh, same situation yep. as Australia is, our Second Amendment? Is, is because we have guns. Yep. Right. But, you know, and, and again, that's another full conversation as far as like, you know, whether or not that's true and then what what, what the government can do. And, and there, there are issues there like like red flag laws and whatnot yeah yeah but, you know again that's like come, come drag me to this camp best luck come on right. come, come on and get right. me even though i don't have covid come in and drag me off somewhere so so i think i think that's our bill review um the pandemic management bill 2021 for victoria over in australia um if you're watching and you're from victoria if you just happen to be one of the 12 people that are watching and from you're victoria from, from no, victoria. We, we have 12 specific ones in victoria right <laughs> and you're and you're thinking you know what's wrong with this bill we just told you um, everything <laughs> is wrong with this bill. This is an atrocious bill. It is, there, is, there is nothing good about it uh, because it simply allows the government to decide that there's a pandemic even when there isn't a pandemic and create orders and move you about, restrict your liberties, all for the presumption that something could happen. That is horrid. We should absolutely, everybody should find that um, actually, uh, absolutely detestable. So that's what I got. You got anything? No, I'm good. We're right. good. So get me out of 116 yeah. pages. Yeah. So, so just so you know, I'm gonna make one more slight comment about it. Um, I did read almost the entirety of the 116 page bill. Tub read uh, a bunch Summaries. of the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, he watched a bunch of videos. He did some research. He read some news. Oh yeah, articles. yeah. Oh, you did. So oh, you're. Not, I thought you just gonna dog me out right here. You no, meant no. That. He oh, spent okay, time. good. All right. So, so. And so when somebody says, hey, you know, podcast isn't any work, they just talk. <laughs> well, maybe for some, but for this podcast, we put in the works so that we can bring the information to you and let you know what's going on and give you a good direction. And this is exactly why you should be reading bills. So you, you don't necessarily need to read the Australian bills, bills but, uh, but I wanted to point it out just because I thought it, was a, uh, I thought it would make some interesting conversation for us here in the United States. And this is exactly why we should be reading the bills here and we should be holding our leadership accountable. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and close this episode out. Thanks for being here. And until next time, that's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. 
I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.